In this presentation, we are going to see ARM Cortex M4 data transfer instructions. So data transfer instructions, which includes moving the data within the processor and the memory access instructions. For this, we are referring the book Definitive Guide to ARM Cortex M3 and Cortex M4 processors in third edition, authored by Joseph Yu. All the contents in this presentation was referred from this textbook. If you want much more details, you can refer this textbook. And we focus much on the chapter 5. And in chapter 5, our target is uh, data transfer instructions, moving data within the processor and memory access instructions here now. So moving the data within the processor. The most basic operations in a microprocessor is to move the data inside the processor. For example, we might want to move the data from one register to another. Uh, one example here is mbov r4 comma r0 meaning copy the value of r0 to r4 while moving the flags also need to be updated means we can add this suffix yes so between one register and another register these are all the example between a register and the special register so primary mask register content need to be moved to the register r7 means there are special instructions like mrs mrs means special register to conventional register so here the special register is primary mask register and uh, the conventional register is R7. Moving the content of the register R2 to the special register, which is control register. For that, register to special register, which is MSR. Move an immediate uh, constant into the register. As we do normally, there is an immediate constant can be moved to the register. As we see here, move R3, hash 24. So immediate constant 24 can be added to the register R3. Similarly, Move the suffix yes denotes means it is uh, status flags need to be updated in the APSR. So move the immediate constant 24 to R3 by updating the APSR status flag. So we'll see one by one. So here we see MOV and MOVS, which is moving the data from between the registers along with the suffix yes denotes the status flags. And here moving the data between the register and a special register, we use the instructions MRS and MSR as we have seen right now. And uh, immediate constants can also be uh, stored into the registers R3 along with the status register updated similar to MOV, MOVS. To load the 32 bit value as 87651234, something like that. Uh, first, we have to load the lower word and then we can load the upper 16 bit word by writing the instruction T. So, T denotes upper 16 bit of R62. 875 as we see in the title of this particular first slide and uh, move a negative value of r7 into r3 means r7 content is once complemented and then move to r3 that is negative value r7 content is once complemented and then it is moved to r3 which is move negate so these are all the few instructions which is used to move the data between the registers inside the processor then comes the memory access instructions. Whenever we talk about memory access instructions, the ARM uses load store architecture as you see in the screen. There is an ARM processor core and there are ARM processor registers and there is a memory. So ARM processor cannot access the memory directly. ARM processor can access only the registers and the registers can write into the memory and register can read from the memory. Reading the data from the memory to the registers is called as load. Storing the data from the registers to the memory is called as store. So, loading the registers from the memory, LDR instruction. Storing the register content to the memory, STR instructions. Always data transfer instructions will have LDR and STR. So, load means registers are loaded from the memory location. Store means register contents are stored into the memory location. Operations cannot be performed with memory. In ARM instruction like move a comma 30 and move 30 h comma a as we do in our 8051 is not possible here ARM processor can only talk to the registers ARM processor cannot talk to the memory that is the one thing you need to understand so memory access instructions so we go for memory access instructions there are a large number of memory access instructions in cortex m4 processors this is due to the comb combination of the support of various addressing modes various data size and data transfer direction etc so various instructions of various data size means table 5.6 you see there is 8 bit unsigned data means LDR as told load instruction means LDR see everywhere there is an LDR store instruction means there is everywhere you can see SDR so for 8 bit means LDR B B denotes it is byte 
load the register byte content. Storing the 8-bit means store the register byte, 8 inverse byte. So signed means, 8-bit signed value means load byte signed, load the register signed byte, store the register signed byte. And 16-bit unsigned data means load the register half word, H means half word, word means 32-bit, half word means 16-bit. So LDRH means half word which is 16-bit, loading the 16-bit register from the memory, storing the 16-bit content of the register to the memory. And 16-bit sign means store the uh, register content to the memory. Here it is, load the memory content to the registers in a signed format. Load the 16-bit signed value from the memory, store the 16-bit register content to memory. 32 bit means simply load register 32 bit means simply store register so multiple 32 bit means this is very interesting what do you mean by multiple 32 bit several registers can be uh, added so there are 16 registers r naught or 15 in the best case all the 15 registers can be loaded with a single instruction ldm similarly all the 16 register content r naught or 15 can be stored to the 16 uh, memory locations by using the instruction stm which is store multiple registers ldm means load multiple register stm means store multiple registers and there is something like double word double word which is 64 bit which is 64 bit registers will be loaded one lower significant register and another higher significant register something like that so load the 60 the 64 bit register we loading the value double d denotes it is double ldrd is double and strd means d means double so store the the 64-bit value that is double register value to the 64-bit locations something like that and the stack operations is of 32-bit where so loading means popping from the memory and the storing means pushing into the memory push means storing from the register pushing the register content to the memory popping means um, reading the memory content to the registers as we know very well so this is a brief summary about memory access instructions for various data size as we see here so one thing you have to notice here is all the memory access instructions uses load instructions and store instructions load instructions reads from the memory and store instructions writes to the memory hence all the memory access instructions in ARM processors are called as load store architecture so further memory access instructions with immediate offset immediate offset means what memory means memory address is necessary no so where the address is this is something like this load the register byte d means destination register from the register along with the offset so read a byte from the memory location rn plus offset so load the register uh, rd from the memory location pointed by rn plus offset similarly ldr sb rd rn comma offset means read and sign extension byte from the memory location rn plus offset s denotes it is sign extension similarly half word similarly signed half word then similarly 32 bit and a double d means double so there is a destination one register and destination two register from the same offset similar to load there are store the byte store the half word and store the full word and store the double word so 8 16 32 and 64 very clearly strb means 8 strh means 16 just str means it is 32 strd means it is 64 loading a byte that is 8 bit unsigned and signed data and loading a 16 bit unsigned and signed loading 32 bit uh, unsigned and signed loading 64 bit uh, data which is unsigned only you cannot do 16 64 bit signed similarly storing the 8 bit uh, content to the memory storing the 16 bit content to the memory strh instruction storing the 32 bit content to the memory which is str instruction strd which is double instruction now the sign extension so ldr sb and ldr sh automatically perform a sign extension uh, operation on the loaded data to convert it to a signed 32 bit value here you see 82 is the read from the LDRB instruction, the value converted into FFFF82 before being placed in the destination register. So the byte is sign extended. That is the one you need to understand here. 
So the address involves supports the right back of the register holding the address. Here LDR R0, R1, hash 8. So here R0 is loaded with the content of the memory location pointed by R1 plus the value 8. Okay. So read a byte value from R1 plus 8 and access the memory. R1 is updated to R1 plus 8. So after loading the register R0, R1 will be incremented again to 8 locations to point to the next data which is auto increment which is called as auto index. So exclamation mark in the instruction says face whether the register holding the address should be updated when the instruction is completed. The address used for the data transfer uses the sum of R1 plus 8 calculated regardless whether the exclamation mark is stated. So write back operation can be used with the number of load store instructions as shown in the table 5.9. So along with uh, the regular uh, offset register instruction, the exclamation mark can also be used for uh, auto indexing. Table 5.9 very clearly talks about that. Okay. So similarly, load uh, 8 bit, unsigned, unsigned, load half word, uh, unsigned, unsigned, which is 16 bit, load 32 bit, load level 32, 64 bit with the destination register RD1, RD2. Here it is store 8 bit, store 16 bit, store 32 bit, and store 64 bit. That is why uh, memory access instruction with immediate offset and write back, which is shown in table 5.9. Exclamation mark denotes it is pre indexed with write back. So this is pre indexing means uh, the, within the square bracket. Within the square bracket, what is there? It is denotes it is direct addressing or memory addressing. Memory addressing. Okay, so whenever the bracket comes, as you see, whenever there is a square bracket comes, this denotes it is addressing, memory addressing. Wherever uh, there is a bracket comes, this denotes memory addressing. 5.8 talks about this. So wherever we see the square bracket, which denotes within the square bracket, what is there? There through that the address will be calculated that we need to understand. That is very important. Now PC related. PC means it is program counter. So the R0 or 15 are the 16 registers available among the 16 registers as we know r15 is a program counter register so the memory access can generate the address value from the current pc value and the offset value so this is commonly needed for loading the immediate values into the register also known as literal pool access changing the execution flow with the help of pc is given in the table 5.11 that is memory access instruction with pc related addressing okay so again loading the byte loading the signed byte so load the unsigned byte into RT using PC offset. Loading the signed byte into RT using PC offset. Program counter is used as a pointer along with the offset to load the corresponding register RT. So loading unsigned and signed 8 bit, loading unsigned and signed 16 bit, loading 32 bit and 64 bit which is very clearly given in this table 5.11 and uh, pre-indexing so before uh, reading the memory it has to be indexed which is called as pre-indexing so it is given clearly this is often used in the processing of data arrays where the address is a combination of base address and an offset calculator from an index value to make this address calculation even more efficient in the index value can be shifted by distance of 0 to 3 bits before added to the base register so for example, why this indexing is necessary means always it is not necessary to read the memory content in sequence. Say for example, if you have a real part and imaginary part, real part value must be stored in one location, the imaginary part of the same data will be stored in the next memory location. So all the odd numbers will, odd number of locations will have the real part of data and all the even number of memory locations will have the imaginary part of data. If even numbers are having, even number of locations have the real part means our number of locations will have the imaginary part. In our program, we want to find out the magnitude of the particular thing means we have to access only the even number of locations. So sequentially, we are not even in a position to read the value. So we have to skip one memory location. So for that, so pre-indexing will be very much useful. The example, so load the register R3 from the memory location. From which memory location? Memory location pointed by R0. R0 pointed memory location must be added with the register R2 content 
left shifted by 2. R2 content left shifted by 2 means the current of R2 may to be left shifted and then it is added with R0 and at which location it points from that location R3 will be loaded. So this kind of register based uh, pre-indexing will help us to read the real values, imaginary values. Similar to that, in random, in different, different locations, if we have a valid data, just like that, we can, with a single instruction, we can able to access the memory location as per our requirement. So logical shift left of R2 is read with, uh, is added with R0 and that memory data from that memory location will be copy to the register R3 or loaded to the register R3 as when clearly mentioned here. The shift operation is optional. We can have a simple operations like str R5, R0, R7. So whenever we need to access the real and imaginary value, the R2, that is LSL, hash 2 can be done. Else, just like that we can use R0 and R7. Store the current of the register R5 into the memory location, pointed by R0 plus R2. Similar for loading, storing also, storing the real values in the even locations, storing the imaginary values in the R locations can also be done efficiently by using this str r5 comma r0 comma r7 as discussed. Uh, and again, the syntax with the register offset. Okay, so earlier it was some immediate offset, now it is a register offset. So the register server is an offset. Earlier it was uh, PC was acting as an offset, then uh, immediate constant was used as an offset. Now the register itself is using as an offset for pointing the corresponding number locations. So byte, signed byte, loading, and logical shift left N, as discussed in an example. So loading 8 bit, signed 8 bit, half word, signed half word, and uh, loading the 32 bit, and storing the byte, storing the half word, and storing the 32 bit. So load and store everywhere you can see load and store instructions are there which is very much interesting for us to understand now it's another uh, interesting thing so why arm processor is much faster because of having some sim instructions like multiple load and multiple store instructions so that is one of the key advantages of arm architecture is that it allows us to read or write multiple data into a contiguous main memory so ldm just load multiple registers and stm store multiple registers these two instructions support 32 bit data and they support two types of pre indexing so increment after and uh, decrement before okay so load the multiple register increment after load the multiple registers decrement before store the multiple registers and increment after store the multiple registers and decrement before and uh, to the register rn the register list okay so when you see an example, it will be much more uh, clear, right? So multiple load store memory instructions here. This example, load multiple registers and increment after to R4, R0 to R3. So what do you understand from this? Load the four registers R0 to R3. Okay. With the contents of the four memory locations whose starting address is pointed by R4. So R4 is pointing a memory location. So uh the memory location the content of the memory location pointed by r4 will be moved to r0 then next location will be moved to r1 then next location will be moved to r2 then next location will be moved to r3 so from the r4 pointed locations four locations of the memory four memory locations will be copied and pasted into the registers r0 to r3 so the registers within the parenthesis are the registers which need to be loaded here in this instruction ldmia within the parenthesis we have r0 to r3 which indicates r0 r1 r2 r3 so four registers need to be loaded from the four memory location content the memory location starting address is pointed by r4 so from r4 subsequent four location content need to be copied and pasted in r0 to r3 within the single instruction Okay, increment after means what? After reading the memory location pointed by R4 and pasted in R0, increment the corresponding memory and then copy the next 32-bit location and then copy and paste it in R1. 
Similarly, four such locations need to be copied and pasted in R0 to R3. Similarly, storing the content of the memory, storing the register contents R0 to R3 to the memory location pointed by R8. So, R8 is the starting address of the memory. The content of R0 will be moved to memory location pointed by R8. Then R1 will be moved to R8 plus 4. R2 will be moved to R8 plus 8. R3 will be moved to R8 plus 12. Something like that. Store the content of the four registers R0 to R3 to the four consecutive memory locations starting from the location pointed by R8. So this is very important uh, instructions which is already available in the conventional ARM processors also. This is a special feature where the best case all the 16 registers can be loaded uh, in a single instruction from the 16 memory locations similarly the 16 register content can be stored to the 16 subsequent memory locations by using stma instructions so this is very interesting and uh, similarly multiple load store memory access instructions with the auto indexing with an exclamation mark which we call it as write back instructions ldmia LDMDB that is increment after and decrement before store multiple registers increment after and store multiple registers decrement before it's very clearly given in the table 5.16 stack push and pop instructions here so stack push and pops are another form of store and multiple and load multiple so they use the currently selected stack pointer for address generation so the currently selected stack pointer can be either there are two stack pointers in the um, cortex series as we know one is called as main stack pointer, another is called as process stack pointer. So, which stack pointer is currently selected for the application code? That stack pointer will be incremented and that stack pointer will be pointing the corresponding memory location. And the same push instruction will push the content of the register to the memory location pointed by the stack pointer. Pop instruction copies the content of the memory location pointed by stack pointer and puts it in the register available in the register list as shown okay so for example push within bracket r0 comma r4 to r7 comma r9 meaning the content of the registers r0 r4 r5 r6 r7 and r9 okay the content of the registers R0, R4, R5, R6, R7, and R9. So these six register content need to be moved to the memory location pointed by stack pointer. Which memory location? Stack memory location. Similarly, pop the content of the memory location pointed by stack pointer to the register R2 and R3 from stack. So usually a push instruction will have a corresponding pop with the same uh, register list but this is not always necessary for example a common exception is when pop is used as a function return so for example this is an instruction this is uh, interrupt service routine uh, while running to the instruction in interrupt service routine the intermediate value must be pushed to the stack after completing the interrupt service routine we are popping back the data so pushing the r4 to r6 along with the return address because return address is available in r14 r14 is called as link register the next program counter value that is the program counter value will be copied to the r14 which is called as link register which is something like a return address okay so the return address along with the return address the register content will be pushed to the stack and while popping along with the register content the return address has to go to the program counter then only program counter can execute the corresponding instructions so this is uh, very interesting right so as you see here push r4 to r6 comma lr means save the r4 to r6 and link register at the beginning of the subroutine lr contains the return address after processing the subroutine you have to pop the registers and the return address by using the instruction pop r4 to r6 comma pc so pop, pop r4 to r6 and return address from stack return address is stored into pc directly this triggers a branch of routine return saves instruction and cycle count so within single instruction we can push approximately 16 registers and after completing the subroutine we can pop uh, maximum 16 registers just like that in a single instruction which is much needed say for example in one second at least at least 
the subrace routine will be called at least 10,000 times. 10,000 times you have to push, 10,000 times you have to pop in one second, which is using much instructions and the cycle counts are also more just for pushing and popping. This instructions, push and pop with multiple register instructions is very much comfortable for saving more time and increasing the execution speed. Which when, once when you are able to realize, those you are able to realize, you can understand the significance of this push multiple registers and pop multiple registers. Because every ASR will get executed several thousand times in one second in most of the cases. So for that cases, these instructions are very much useful for increasing the speed as well as it will save the instructions also. That is very interesting, which you need to note down at this time. So thank you very much.